how you doing youtube how you doing it's your boy fucking poop stank how you doing like and subscribe thank you for being here we're going to be covering world news today we're actually going to be covering iran uh qatar with the world cup and uh a little bit of north korean news as well you know they're up to their usual shenanigans so thanks for being here make sure you like and subscribe I'm flirting with anime avatars on the chat just to catch you up on what's happening here. But first thing I wanted to show, this is pretty fucking crazy. Um, this is absolutely totally nuts. I might want to change, you know, this. This That would help, wouldn't it? I, there we go. World news. Um, the home, now museum, of Ayatollah, of Ayatollah Kahamini. Um, YouTube viewers are smelly. How dare you? I'm drinking cup of iced pee. Well, you know, that's disgusting. But thank you for letting us know. The home now museum of Ayatollah Khomeini, founder of the Islamic Republic, set on fire by Iranian protesters. So, I mean, this, this, you know, this movement has really reached a new peak, a new genesis here. And um, here we have, you know, um, Iranian protesters burning down Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khomeini's museum uh, i guess his home was converted into a museum this is this is really kind of taking this movement to the next level i'm also drinking chilled piss delicious very thought you said chilled piss it's almost as good as garbage fuel the number one drink mix company in the world garbage fuel make sure you drink your garbage fuel with a little bit of chilled piss garbage fuel recommends freezing piss into ice cubes using those ice cubes to chill your garbage fuel that will add a certain musk a certain kind of uh you know mm, to your garbage fuel make sure you drink it today 100 percent garbage juice thank you so much i'm the exclusive sponsor of garbage fuel thank you so much um drink it with chilled piss today garbage fuel um uh, so there you go uh that's it's really not a lot of footage there that we have i don't really have many more much more um hey lenny over here lenny with his garbage fuel merch proud owner of a garbage fuel coffee cup if you want to own a little bit of garbage fuel for yourself you can check out the merch store exclusive merch only only place in the fucking planet where you can get garbage fuel merch is right here make sure you check it out today iran soldiers open fire on protesters families seize bodies so not, not only do they kill this guy extra plastic and rotten produce that's a great idea i hear the extra plastic adds a certain texture that you that you just can't get with you know organic food you know what i mean it's it, it really does add this kind of body that a lot of drinks just can't match Rotten produce, that's interesting. Interesting. Never thought of that one. I'll have to try that one next time. Um, so, yeah, so not only are they killing the protester, they're actually seizing the body now. <laughs> that's how you end up with a little little shop of horrors situation, woke patriot. Garbage fuel does not recommend feeding garbage fuel uh, to, uh, to plants of various kinds, especially Venus flytraps just in the case that it mutates the plant into a monster. Of course, there was that incident in 1997. It was covered up. Iranian Revolution Guards opened fire on family members mourning a dead protester and seized his body from the hospital. God damn, dude. So here they are, they're mourning, you know, and they're doing a rather, you know, pretty juicy protest here. Cops bust up the protest, open fire on the family members, and then take the kid's body. Take the kid's body, dude. See, that's what you get, woke patriot. They sure are. I don't. I don't know. You'll have to try. Um, Zier monies. I do know they ship to Canada, so I know they go as far as Canada. But you're wel You're welcome to try. I have no fucking idea. Probably to prevent him from being buried. Oh, because that would be another protest. I see. The country's clerical leadership under Ayatollah al Khomeini is facing its biggest challenge since the Islamic Revolution of 1979 in two months of protests sparked by the death of Masa Amini. Authorities have responded with a crackdown that also based group Iran Human Rights say left dead at least 342 people. 342 people. Do you imagine if Occupy Wall Street resulted in the death of 342 Americans? How would we react to that? 
Love using garbage can to hold reusable straws. You only use once, it's way down, and I toss it on the river. That's perfect. We, pref we, we would prefer you to toss it directly uh, onto the ground, but a river is good, too. It'll eventually make its way to the river. But you're not giving it a chance to pollute the ground on its, on its several decades journey to the river, where it will then, of course, continue to break into smaller parts to further infect humanity. So butter knives, make sure that instead of throwing it in the river, you throw it a couple feet away from the river in the ground so it has a chance to pollute the ground first. Thank you so much. That was an insult to the family. I'm pretty sure most Muslims believe that you don't get buried, you can't go to heaven. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case, right? <laughs> Guys, stop talking about garbage. I'm trying to talk about a serious thing here, okay? Jesus. I love that everyone's in, in with the joke, though. Please continue to be funny. But goddamn, we're trying to talk about some poor kid dying here. Um, the authorities have responded with a crackdown. Uh, so it, it killed. So this protest. It, so, so these protesters. So 342 people have been killed during this during this protest movement. Um, half a dozen already sentenced to death, and thousands more arrested. Protesters have been killed in 22 of Iran's 31 provinces. IHR said Wednesday, including 123 in Sistane, Baluchistan and 32 in Amani's home province of Kurdistan, where violence flared in the town of Bukhan overnight. Last night, after IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, forced attacked Shahid Ghul Per Hospital in Bukhan, they seized Shahihar Mohammadi's body and buried him secretly, the Norway-based Hengau rights group said. I see. So they, they, they do a burial... But they do it in secret so that there's not a whole nother protest because that, you know, they these these funeral processions turn into large protests. Um, these forces opened fire on his family and inflicted injuries on at least five people. Henga, which monitors abuses in Kurdish areas, told AFP activists accuse Iran security forces of carrying out secret burials of protesters they have killed to prevent more violence from flaring at their funerals. Security force also opened fire on protesters in towns of Devinci Daria in Kurdistan province, wounding several people, Hengau said on Saturday. Iran has accused its foreign foes, including Britain, Israel, and the United States, of fomenting violence in the country during protests since the September 16th death in custody of Amini. Um, I mean, if the United States, uh, you know, intelligence agencies aren't supporting this protest movement, they, uh, they're really slipping up. I got it. Hey, ships the UK at least. Hey, you bought, you bought one. I should have a thing soon then. If, if you bought something, I should have a notice that pops in. Um, well, that's very nice of you. If you really did that. Thank you. Family's Christian, but my uh, grandmother was a uh, creamy and my dang was going to be buried and stuff. made worry about not getting them if she was dying. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. LOL, I wanted to check. Ah. Well, order, order whatever you wish, you know, and make sure it goes directly into a landfill when you're done, okay? All right? Make sure you recycle properly. Um, I've been killed. Security forces are on his. Yeah, so uh, Amani, a 22-year-old Iran and Kurdish, uh, Kurdish origin, died three days after her arrest in Tehran by notorious morality police after an alleged breach of the Islamic Republic's mandatory hijab law. God, it's terrible. I can't believe they, ju they just have people that are, like, deputized to just walk around and harass women. It's really, it's, I just couldn't, I can't believe it. In a statement, Iran's foreign ministry hit out at the deliberate silence of foreign promoters of chaos and violence in Iran in the face of terrorist operations in several Iranian cities. Oh, cry me a river. It is the duty of the international community and international assemblies to condemn the recent terrorist attacks in Iran and not to provide a safe haven for extremists, it added. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. That, that is not happening. On Wednesday, 10 people, including a woman, two children, and a security officer were killed in two separate attacks in the cities of Isaiah and Isfahan according to state media and a hospital source. Two members of Iran's pro-government Bazji parliamentary force were stabbed to death in the northeastern city of Mashahad while trying to intervene against rioters, quote-unquote, according to state news agency IRNA. I mean, that's, you know, you know you've, once you've killed 374 uh, protesters, the protesters, you know, they start to fight back, man. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised to hear of some of these security forces getting dragged into the crowd and, you know, brutally murdered. I mean, there, it sounds like they're open, opening fire in some of these cases. 
Um, so total fucking chaos. So anyway, so there was the article, but I wanted to also play this video. Iranian security forces open fire in subway station as protests escalate. I might have to censor some of this, but I'm pretty sure most of it is going to be censored. This was uh, aired on ABC. So this is this is the mouse's uh, news network. So they're not really going to show you anything juicy. Just a heads up. And the United Nations is calling on Iran to release thousands of people detained for peaceful protests. Director of Strategic Litigation Project at the Atlantic Council and human rights lawyer Gisu Nia joins me live now for more on this. Gisu, thank you for being here. Human rights groups say at least 21 people are facing charges punishable by death in Iran. But the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights says the country can only issue the death penalty for the most serious crimes under international law. So how's this happening? Yeah, so the Islamic Republic of Iran has been the leading global executioner per capita for years, um, for about 13 years now, they with just some brief breaks. And so what they do is that the death penalty is not issued in line with the provisions under international law and the obligations that the Islamic Republic of Iran is bound to. So um, one can get the death penalty <laughs> for quote-unquote widespread moral corruption and offenses that can include crimes like adultery um, same-sex relations can be punished uh, with the death penalty in iran so the way that the islamic republic meets out the death sentence is, is not in accordance with international standards yeah. uh, Gisi, i want to talk about this so was it was it in, was it in iran or was it in saudi arabia that had those videos of of like a gay person getting pushed off a roof or was that in was that in Iraq or Afghanistan? It was in one of those. I, I get them all confused because I'm a, a privileged racist white white bitch. <laughs> I haven't been called a white bitch in a long time. Fuck, man, that feels good. This video showing Iranian security forces opening fire in a Tehran metro station. Um, Maggie really is talking about how the, you know this Christ. wasn't um, your typical ammunition here. So what more can that you tell ISIS. us about this? I think this? you're right. That was ISIS. Yeah, I take it back. Well, what we know is that the state security forces um, often deal with very heavy, heavy handed ways of crowd control. And so back in November 2019, when there was widespread protests across the country, the state security forces killed um, hundreds, if not thousands, of protesters within the span of a few days, really. So what we've seen in, in the current state people? of protests is that there has been, I, I think because women and girls were at the forefront of a lot of these protests, and girls as young as 12 taking off their you know, mandatory hijab and all that and protesting, I think um, some, of that, some of the violence that we've seen in uh, November 2019 has Damn, not necessarily... Qualified been repeated at scale in such a short space of time based on that example. What we're now seeing, though, is that the authorities are getting increasingly frustrated with their inability to stop what we're now in going into the third month of protest. They see that they now have an inability to stop it. And so I think, unfortunately, we're going to be seeing a lot more heavy handed tools and tactics to try to control this as well as issuance of death sentences to protesters that are currently in custody. Well, and Davey, Davey's pointing out that, you know, there was a story he read about a mother and father who hired a gay guy's cousin to behead him. I think it's fair to say, and as we can see in these protests, that that is not the opinion of everyone that lives in Iran. I think there's a lot of people in Iran that are actually quite nostalgic for their secular days uh, uh, in the 70s. And would really like to see a return to, um, you know, to a, a more open and fair democracy. I think there's a um, that's the main reason why we're seeing this. Of course, it's very possible that this movement could be co-opted by bad actors and, and whatnot. But I do think that there's a genuine desire uh, for freedom and democracy in Iran, um, even even though there is a, a very heavy religious contingent that would that does prefer the theocracy and, and would and would prefer to see, you know, everything stay the same. Now, Germany and Iceland are leading a push to create a special fact-finding mission to investigate alleged rights violations linked to the initial protests. So what happens if they do find violations? 
Nothing. So this has been a push from civil society organizations and UN experts for a Jack long time shit. now. There was first um, a call to establish an investigative mechanism after the violence in November 2019. Those calls have finally been heeded because we see repetition of these events. What we're hoping is that with the establishment of a fact-finding mission, a commission of inquiry, or an investigative mechanism, that these violations would be documented and that there would be a way to robustly seek accountability for these harms that have occurred. Because often we face a lack of, of evidence that would be able to sustain a criminal indictment. And so we strongly want the outcome of the special session next Thursday to be that sort of accountability mechanism. We also hope that it would have some deterrent effect Back in November 2019, nothing was done to properly document what was happening. And now we see a repetition of that sort of violence. And so we're hoping that this would send a message that that's not acceptable. All right, Gisunia, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. And then you get a fucking Stephanopanopanopanop. Ugh. So anyway, uh, power to the Iranian women, uh, power to the Iranian people. Uh, who are, you know, hoping to turn this momentum into a legitimate democratic movement, and I hope you're able to do that. It's incredibly difficult to take, um, to take public rage and turn that into a, f a f an effective, you know, real real world effective change in your government. Um, you know, you need the right kind of people. You need, you know, you need the masses, but you also are going to need a couple people that know what the hell they're doing. And know how to run a government, and you got to, you know, make them put them front and center, and make them leaders of your movement immediately, because um, you're not going to get very far if you're just a bunch of angry people. You're going to be very easy to divide and conquer. You need to focus that power on a manifesto and a goal. You know, you need to you need to focus your your um, the rage into effective change, and to do that, you need you're going to need some people that know what they're doing. So. Hopefully you find those people, and hopefully those people are not just, you know, you know, people from, you know, previous corrupt governments that are now resurfacing, you know, because that that basically just ruins the whole thing. Um, you got to find some fresh blood. You got to find some new new people that are going to be leading this movement. Um, don't be trying to dredge up people from the past. I know it's 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 tempting because they have, you know, that people know who they are. But if they're if they're bringing a bunch of baggage from a previous government, then no dice. Uh, but I think it's been pretty solid, pretty solidly uh, Ayatollah, you know, <laughs> Ayatollah after Ayatollah. It's not like there's been a lot of challenge to it. So there's probably a lot of opportunity for some fresh blood to come in there. But no doubt that that fresh blood is then putting himself directly um, in the uh, in the sniper rifle scope because he'll be immediately targeted for execution immediately, whoever that person is. If they were to stand up and say, yep, I'm the leader of this movement and, uh, you know, install me and replace replace the government with with uh, with my government and will create real change. Yeah, he'll be targeted for execution immediately. So, you know, more power to the Iranian people. Uh, moving on here, we're going to talk about Qatar. According to exclusive um, Ipsos polling. If you, if you don't know what the hell's going on because you ignore sport, sports news, I don't I don't uh, you know, I don't blame you. But what's happening is basically. Qatar is an incredibly corrupt, you know, oil oligarchy, and uh, their human rights records are are terrible, absolutely terrible. They've uh, built this uh, entire stadium, um, built the entire sports, everything on migrant labor. Um, they're they're also uh, you know going back on some of their promises about serving beer, which is you know whatever. Who cares about that? But it. Um, the the leader of the World Cup organization has made some very bizarre statements about how the criticism that he's been receiving is like him being treated like a migrant or a gay person. So very bizarre comments. So I thought I'd catch you up on all this. Um, the basic gist is that you know these these sporting agencies, you know the the Olympics, FIFA, Super Bowl, NFL, MLB, they're incredibly corrupt. They're basically money money laundering operations, and you know to the highest bidder goes you know goes the winner. And we should actually start we should start to be a little bit more skeptical about some of these sporting contests because, quite frankly, in the NFL specifically, I think there's some fucking chicanery going on. I think there's some cheating going on. 
Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to hear if that was happening in FIFA as well, certain games getting played certain ways. They banned alcohol at the largest football event on the planet after FIFA signed a multi-million dollar contract with Budweiser. Yeah, so, you know, some people lost some money or, you know, whatever. I think people are still going to get paid whether they sell the beer or not, but maybe they were going to make more money on top of the money, the the brand deals and everything, right? Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, hopefully this, you know, what you would hope um what you would hope is that the FIFA organization would learn their lesson and not not want to work with theocracies and dictatorships. But of course, that is not the lesson that they are going to learn. Um, club football is much less corrupt than international football for whatever reason. Um, well, that's interesting, Alice Te- uh, Teca. Thank you for that uh, comment. Welcome to the stream. Um, that's yes, that's why your Jaguars keep getting cheated, dude. It's it's they're they're li- the refs are cheating. I think something's up though. Yeah, you ever seen some some calls that are like that doesn't make a lick of sense. That doesn't that call doesn't make any sense. Where where did that come from? And it just so happens to be the essential call that shifts the entire paradigm of the game. Or have you ever seen like where a team just like like they're kicking a lot of ass and then they just completely throw the game? Does I mean I've played in football that can happen. You know the momentum can shift. I don't know. Just, something just seems a little. You know, something seems up. I don't know, but that's just me. That's just me. I don't watch a lot of sports, but sometimes something's like, man, that's a little sus, isn't it? According to exclusive Ipsos polling for Global News, 7 in 10 people and, and say Tifa. the World yeah, Cup qualification right. makes yep. them proud to be Canadian. Nailed it. But in terms of viewership, only one-third will pay close attention to the event, and 6 in 10 say they couldn't care less. Nah. World Cup interest is driven by age, with people 18 to 34 most likely to watch closely. It certainly plays a role uh, in a few ways. For, for all the reasons that you've talked about, all the controversy surrounding the choice of Qatar as a host country and and there are a few so so that's one thing but there all there's also the fact that it's held in November uh, which is not really your typical soccer season for Canadians because most of us can't really play soccer outside at this time of year it, it's quite cold depending on where we live in the country so so that may also play a, a bit in, in those results. But we also know from global research we've done, when we compared interests uh, globally in the World Cup now, if we compare to what we measured in 2018, for example, we do have significantly less interest in the World Cup this time around. So so it so we do have a bit of a comparison point for for other countries and Canada was also a part of this global uh, piece of research and and we see that yes relatively speaking Canadians are less interested than people <laughs> in most other countries but there's been a drop globally not just in Canada there was a there, there there's been wow. a drop uh, in other countries that's an as incredible well in turnaround interest. so clearly all the controversy and yes, around Rooney, the world it's clearly Antifa. has you know, reduced interest in general They're in, all over in the, the World place. Cup. But as experience shows that sometimes it depends what happens during the event. Once the events start, the hype starts, uh, it becomes real and people start watching games. And if Canada is doing well, uh, it might generate more interest and all the controversies can sometimes uh, give way to more excitement. But going into the event, we're definitely seeing that interest is not as high as it could have been. Yeah, he makes a good point. If if Canada if Canada or any other nation is is like winning, then people will st- pay more attention. Um so here's here's the here's these bizarre statements by this by the head of FIFA. Just some really I mean, is this guy really this out of touch? I mean, seriously, does he does he actually like piss in in golden toilets and shit? You know what I mean? Like I think I think that's how out of touch this guy is. This is the image the Qatar government and FIFA have been trying so hard to promote. But the mood music has been anything but celebratory. Qatar's human rights record has overshadowed everything in this World Cup. Even the players are talking politics rather than... actually sounds like the soundtrack to Worms World Tour. Remember that? Worms World Tour? Fuck. Love Worms. Great game. ...than football. The winner to organize... The 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. 
Many of those now playing for their national side were teenagers when Qatar was chosen. England defender Eric Dyer was 16, but he told journalists Qatar's treatment of migrant workers was a terrible situation. FIFA's president had written to players like Dyer, urging them to focus on football, not politics. Failing to shut down the debate, Gianni Infantino chose a different tactic today. He went on the attack, accusing Qatar's critics of hypocrisy. I think for what we Europeans have been doing in the last 3,000 years around the world, we should be apologizing for the next 3,000 years before starting to give moral lessons. Hundreds of thousands of workers from development countries come here, they earn 10 times more than what they earn in uh, their home country. We in Europe, we close our borders and we don't allow practically any worker from these countries. Both Qatar and FIFA have disputed claims that six and a half... Wow, guys, didn't you know? They're actually heroes. They're, they're not mass exploi explo <laughs> exploiters and corrupt assholes. They're actually heroes. And uh, they, they believe in democracy more than, than uh, actual democracies do. I didn't, I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? A thousand migrant workers have died building the World Cup stadiums. They say the official number of work-related deaths is just three. We hear a lot about sports washing, uh, but this was FIFA washing, uh, insisting that everything would be hunky-dory and we shouldn't worry about what, anything. What the fuck is happening? Is, is is this guy in fucking... What the fuck is happening? Is there a whole... Is he in Qatar? Is this what Qatar is like? This looks like there's a... Are those tables and chairs? No. Those are lighting fixtures. Oh my god. Those are lighting fixtures and chandeliers, and it just looks like tables and chairs up on the ceiling, but it's actually not. They didn't actually mean for it to look like that. Wow, I thought he was in some kind of novelty room where they're like, you know, the ceiling was on the floor and stuff. Okay, never mind. Sorry. And we shouldn't worry about anything. He accused um, Western journalists and the Western uh, countries of hypocrisy, um, but I think he was also guilty of the same thing. And FIFA's it's president went from the bizarre to the ridiculous today when he got personal. They know what it means to be discriminated, to be bullied as a foreigner in a foreign country, as a child at school. I was bullied because I had uh, red hair and I had these red, how do you call them? Freckles. Freckles. Two, four, six, eight. Qatar must legislate. Those comments infuriated protesters outside the Qatar embassy in London this afternoon. Well, regardless of his own experience, the most important thing right now is the suffering of Qatari people, He's particularly women, oppressed. LGBTs and migrant workers. His statement is an insult to their suffering. The World Cup starts tomorrow with the home side playing Ecuador. Politics won't be far away. The England and Wales captains will be wearing one love armbands he really to did raise make awareness. That, he really did make that argument, didn't he, Butter Knives? I used to have red hair and freckles. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be a migrant worker, you know, fall, falling off a scaffolding because I because the company I'm working for didn't want to pay for proper safety gear. That's the same exact thing as being a redhead, man. They picked on me. The kids are tough, man. Kids picked on me so hard. Man, that is just like being impaled from a piece of fucking raft or falling from 100 feet in the air. Fuck, man, I can relate. ...of discrimination, an act of rebellion, be it small, in a country where same-sex relationships are outlawed. Well, there is also some sport in the World Cup, and tomorrow night the football will finally kick off. Oh, who gives a fuck? You want to watch this shit? Go ahead and fucking here's the link to the Kafka news desk at Channel 4. Fuck the World Cup. And, you know, I, I would love to see a sporting contest focusing on the sport and focusing on the contest between two human beings, you know, between two teams of human beings. Not this money circus that it's turned into it's just fucking disgusting it just it, it you know it just it 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 makes my five percent interest in 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 sport you know it erases that it erases that 
<laughs> exactly, uh, Alice. Uh, exactly. Um, Ukraine Dep Ministry of Defense Vladimir Putin War. What's this about? We're going to be getting to our Ukraine coverage very soon. Probably another 15, 20 minutes we'll be there. Russia borrows in large of it. Ooh, <laughs> this will be good for the economy. Thank you so much for this article. We will be going, going and putting this into the good old Ukraine section coming up very soon. Coming up first. And you guys are chomping at the bit. You want to see that combat footage. I know. Um, the, finish, the last little bit of Qatar news here. Finnish Daily cancels trip to Qatar World Cup over workers' rights. So, you know, some some government entities, you know, they're, you know, they're doing it. But really, you know, um, it's just, just like all the other corrupt sporting agents. Like, everyone's showing up. Everyone's doing their job. They're just ignoring all the human rights shit. So, but there are a few people that are standing up to this, but not nearly enough. They, I mean, FIFA should have been, like, the, the team should have boycotted FIFA when they made the announcement um, years ago, right? And they just said, okay, well, I guess it's happening. We've been hearing, we've been hearing little news stories about the human rights abuses of Qatar preparing for this World Cup uh, for, you know, for years now. So this is, it's, it's, everyone knows it. If you're participating in this now, you're guilty as fucking sin. Don't try to tell me you give a shit about human rights, but then you go ahead and make a shitload of money in Qatar. Fuck off. So moving on. North Korea over here doing its usual yearly threat to the world, letting everyone know that they're starving and that they need more food aid. North Korea warns of all-out nuclear response to U.S. aggression. North Korea has promised to resolutely react to U.S. threat of nuclear weapons use with its own nuclear capabilities. So this is the bullshit we, we hear from... Uh, North Korea, literally almost every single year. It's part of a negotiating tactic that, that they like to use um, where they can get food aid. They they act all bellicose and they act all fucked up. Um, holy shit. This is breaking news out of Iran uh, from, from your boy Davey over here. It's been reported that within the last few hours, Iranian military forces have entered the city of Mahabad in, north, in northwestern Iran the use of heavy weaponry can be heard throughout the city, and there are many disturbing claims beginning to coming out that include massacres. What? The fucking religious theocracy is 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 committing massacres in the city. No volume on this, but we can see an army truck rolling in. This is in Iran. Army truck rolling in. We might have a situation where death squads are rolling in and killing protesters en masse. We have soldiers lined up in formation walking down the road. Looks like they're letting vehicles pass. Wow, man, to be a civilian driving in a vehicle in that situation. And then what do we have over here? Looks like this religious theocracy is taking this uh, crackdown to the next level. Um, I guess we're going to have to be watching this uh, space here uh, during the stream here. Let's go ahead and uh, take it to the Iran Reddit. I'm sure they have a live thread of what's happening. Uh, we'll keep that rolling and we'll check in on that. Tension read before posting and commenting. Where's the live thread? No, no live thread. About Reddit World News. We have a live thread there. Trying to get just, you know, just trying to get up to the minute information on the situation. We got live thread for the Russian invasion. Nothing for Iran. Okay, well, I'll, I will check up in the next couple minutes on this. Yeah, is this LA? Yeah, funny. Um, terrible, terrible news. Terrible news that they've decided to crack down in this manner. Um, Sounds like sounds like we're gonna get that death toll up a little bit higher than uh, than 374, which I'm sure was a 
I'm sure it was an underestimate. Okay, real quick, just finishing up the world news here. North, just once again, just wanted to report, just wanted to, you know, reassure people. This is something North Korea does almost every year. Um, okay, John Axel. Oh, man, there's so much bad news happening. Um, but, you know, don't worry. North Korea does this shit. They, they negotiate a bunch of food aid to, to, to stop. And then they distribute that food aid amongst their people because they refuse to actually govern and, you know, protect their people. All the money goes directly into the corrupt, you know, Kim Jong-il re regime to, you know, keep them fat and happy and rich. For, I don't know for what reason. It's not like, you know, he, he, Kim Jong-il gets to, you know, Un, I'm sorry, Kim Jong-un gets to uh, um, spend all that money. But, like, literally no one else, you know, I guess if you're close to the government, you do get special privileges. But... Man, you're like if you're busted with like American DVDs and shit, you can be executed and um it's just it's just crazy. It's crazy how the people surrounding this this, you know, organization still, you know, allow it to exist. For more credible BBC reporter. Okay, thank you. You know North Korea president went to school in Sweden? I still think till like 16. Yeah, I mean that's a common thing. They the same thing in Russia, right, where they they bring their kids to to western education and and I guess we're just, I guess, I guess we're just cool with it. So, um, North Korea test fires ICBM with range to strike entire U S. So this is just, like I said, this is the usual bullshit and it's just about getting aid and they'll get their aid and then they'll distribute it amongst their people and say it was a gift from the United States because this asshole's so great. Look at this fucking freakazoid. Are you kidding me? This, this is the peak. This is peak human male guys. This is what an alpha male looks like. He's a God. His whole family's a bunch of gods. Really? Or are they just a bunch of corrupt fuckers who, you know, wound up at top and now that they'll do anything, including convince people that they're above human human life? God, so it's, it's just so pathetic. I just hate it. Anyway, moving on from North Korea. <laughs> North Korea is like a homeless guy who robs you off your sandwich with a plastic knife. And, and you just give him the sandwich. Like you're just you're actually trying to just give him the sandwich. And he's like, ha ha, gotcha, you white devil, ah, you know, and you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, wow, man, oh man, you're really fucking me up, dog, you know, and you're like, you know, please keep eating the sandwich. So there you go, folks, uh, we will be following up in the Ukraine segment on YouTube there, so if you want to, uh, we'll be, if you want to follow up on Iran after this video, uh, you know, and for some reason you're watching this on YouTube, that'd be hilarious, uh, but check on the ukraine video i will be doing a quick follow-up on iran just to see what what else is happening there it sounds like there's some legitimate executions well real quick we also have davy's link here let's go ahead and take a look at this actually real quick uh, oh my god i gotta stop playing that video it's so fucking it's like legitimately un, unnerving this video just published by our irgc from mahabad they don't conceal their military operation in the city and claim some so-called hideouts belong to the Kurdish opponent party. Komala has been eliminated. There's no clear picture from the under the siege city tonight. Wow. Okay. So they're, they're actually trying to say that this is a military operation that they're doing out in the open up against some terrorist. Oh, this is, this is how they do it. This is how they justify it. Yeah, those are grenades. Damn. Well, there you go. We'll we'll try to get another update on Iran um, in the uh, Ukraine section. Thank you so much, YouTube. Like and subscribe. Uh, you know, get get abducted by aliens in a brutal abduction. Thank you so much.